<laughs> yeah, I wanted to I wanted to do a bit more practice on the grammars, but also do like some rigorous examples of the plumbing lemma, because you actually have to do those on your homework. So I figured maybe, you know, painful as it is, you might want to do some of those. Are you gonna start with those? Uh well you wanna do those first is that is that your preference? Uh, I see. You want to pumping lemma, huh? High demand for pumping lemma. All right. So why don't I? Um, I didn't write it down here, but why don't I write down what the pumping lemma is? Or who wants? Why doesn't someone help me? Given uh, regular language L. So what does the pumping lemma say? So there exists, or there is, P, which is the pumping length, so this is an exercise in quantifiers, <laughs> such that such that uh, I guess I'll put it down here. For all, so I guess, yeah, for all, for all strings S in the language with the length of S bigger than this pumping length, maybe great, it doesn't matter, greater than or equal to, let's say greater. Uh, so much for the vigorous proof. <laughs> uh, no, they're both rigorous. Oh, okay. This is a non-deterministic rigorous proof. You could either make it greater than or greater than or equal to. Um, yeah, still rigorous. So what is next? There is... Ah, I'm getting confused. So there exists a decomposition... So I can decompose S equals X, Y, Z with what? So there's a composition of, of S. I can break down S to three parts. Right, with the first two parts happening before the pumping length. I guess we'll make that greater than or equal to, because that's less than. Otherwise, yeah. Right with y non-zero. Oh, man. And I wanted to have this on the board. But I'm running too big. Maybe, can you see down here if I write down in the gutter here? Yeah? Such that. All j, y is a loop. So x, y to the j, z is in L. So that's the pumping lemma. So this is some property that all regular languages have. That you know, any really long string is not interesting. It's just a, it's just a, some you know, some small string. Or s there's a finite number of strings and all the other arbitrary long strings you get from pumping up. So that's what that says. So that I can find a pumping length, which is generally the number of states in the machine. It'll always work. Sometimes you could find a pumping length that's less than that, but the, the number of states in the machine will always work, such that any string bigger than that is just something ratcheted up. Yeah. From something, you know, something ratcheted up. Um, Okay, so so this is hard. The, one definition of complexity is alternation of quantifiers. I don't know if you've, if you've ever studied logic. Actually, we have. Uh, <laughs> one definition of complexity is how many times you have these things switching, right? It's not. Uh, did we talk about that? No. So so this is an aside because we might do something called alternating Turing machines later. So. This, this could be 
you know, interesting. So, so, so if we have many quantifiers of same kind, these are easy to understand. So if I have, you know, there exists x such that there exists a y, such that there exists a z, such that there exists a w, such that x plus y plus z plus w equals 0, that's an easy statement to understand. I can have as many, you know, of those as I like, or for all x, for all y, for all z, for all w, f of x, y, z, w equals 3. These are very simple to understand. It doesn't matter how many for alls or there exists I have. They all kind of merge together. You know? But every time I alternate a quantifier, it's like, a, you know, it's like he thought that I thought that you thought that he thought. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that alternates a lot. I mean, it, it gets, gets more and more complex. This is one definition of complexity. And I think someone uh, looked into this. I think it's impossible for humans to understand more than like four or five <laughs> quantifier alternations. They're just, you know, they're just really, we, yeah. They're just like, there's just no chance, you know, just uh, for us to somehow our brains don't work that way. So in some sense, maybe that's a, an argument against this is a right way to, to encode human thought. Maybe if we can't understand most of the sentences encoded this way, maybe there's a problem with that. But in any case... <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We're going forward anyway. But in any case, this is understandable enough, but it's still hard. This is why calculus is hard, too. Have you ever wondered... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, limits? No, no. This is why calculus is hard. Like, so calculus is, epsilons and deltas are like that. You know, for all epsilons, there exists a delta such that for all x, right? That's why limits are hard to understand. There's, you know, they're an elementary thing with one quantifier alternation. This is just one quantifier alternation. And already, <laughs> I guess two quantifier alternations, I'm sorry. So, Could you take a regular language and just show, show how that works? An example of this for a regular language? Okay. All right. Um, zero star, one star. So I claim, well, I'll, I'll look at the machine to figure out the pumping length. So I guess I could take P equals... No, one... Yeah. Huh. So I think you can actually take... So this machine, you can have no zeros also. Which is fine, but it has to... End. But with this... this this machine has to have a zero, but zero star, one star does it. It doesn't have to have a zero, but it does have to have. It has to have a one for when you're bringing it. No, it doesn't. No. This is the initial state is final. Yeah, two final. Oh, right, right. Oh, is that with the little circle? Oh, yeah. The initial state is also final, so this will accept the empty string. So here's zero, one, zero star, one star. So I claim actually the pumping length is three. So there's three states. So actually... Why don't we show, I think we could show that the, the pumping lemma works for three and it fails for two. That might be, you know, if I took pumping length two here, the statement wouldn't be true. So, for example, let's try it. So, P equals... Well, there just has to be a P. Yeah. There just, I mean, there, I don't have to find it exactly. I could take any P greater than or equal to three. It will work. So, P equals three here. So, let's see. So, if I take, so take... Any string in L. For example, what's this? Um, so I need to. Um, So I need to find a decomposition. 
I just need to find one. So I can need to decompose s equals x, y, z such that the length of x, y is less than or equal, less than three. All right. I should check the numbers in the book. Does anyone have the book with them? I don't know if it's less than less than equal. It's less than or equal. Is that how the book does it? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't really matter because p is not really fixed, but I want to stick with the book. Less than or equal to just just for consistency's sake. All right, so such that xy is less than or equal to 3. Find that decomposition such that xy is less than or equal to 3. Such that so that xy to the j z in L for all. I guess it holds for 2 also. Huh. Oh, this one's too easy. Why don't I take <coughs> why don't I make this one one zero one star? I apologize for the change. So one one zero one star. Okay, that'll be more interesting. Um, I claim actually. So the so the pumping length here is five, I guess, automatically. I claim actually I could still use three. P will three will still work here. Yeah, three will still work here. So let's take something in this language, but two won't. Okay, so pumping length, the number of states of the machines will always work, but you could take less. Zero, zero. Okay, so now just keep in mind this is completely irrelevant to what you're doing in the sense of you'd never actually do this, never verify that the pumping lemma holds for a, a regular language because we proved that in full generality, or the book did. Really? Okay. All right, but in any case, you never really do it this way. So this is not like learning a practical technique. It's just, let's see, let's get a feel for this, sorry, for this pumping lemma. So basically, I want to show that I can always find a string of length less than or equal to 3 with the wine on 0 so that everything's in the language. Is that possible? Yes, I can let. So I just need to find 1. Not all decompositions will work. I just So I could let, say, so it's a weird notation. Let x be that, y be 0, and z all this stuff. Okay. Then, um, let's see. The length of xy equals 3, which is certainly less than or equal to 3. The length of y equals 1, which is certainly greater than 0. So that's true. And what is x, y, j, z? So that's just going to be 1, 1, 0, j times 0, 0, 1. Is this in the language? Yes. yes. So, so this is one reason, you know, just because the pumping lemma, well, notice, let me back up. The pumping lemma holds here, but just because it holds doesn't mean that much for the language. It doesn't say that much about the language. That's why the pumping lemma holding doesn't prove it's regular. Because all we have to do is find, you know, one decomposition, you know, for every string. So there's still a lot of leeway there. There's a lot of leeway. But the pumping lemma failing is the interesting part. Okay. Um, I want to keep that stuff there. I want to show you why p equals 2 doesn't work. Want to do that? So what happens when we try and take p equals 2 here? Let's try p equals 2. What's that? We would be pumping on the 1. So we have to... 
We don't have any choice then, right? Then. So what are our. So. What are our choices? There's only two possibilities here. What are the two possibilities for for the decomposition? So because because we have that x y is less than or equal to two here, and y greater than or equal to zero, that restricts our decomposition, right? So if I take this string, x y has to be in here, has to be less than or equal to two. Right, and y has to be non-zero. So this is one possible decomposition. What's the other one? X is zero and y is two. Right, so x is nothing. Nothing for x. That's OK. That's allowed. Y is one. Uh, it would have to be one, one. It could be one or one. Actually, I guess there's three possibilities, yeah. So y could be one, one, and z could be all this stuff. So make that three. Or x is nothing, y is just one, and z is all this stuff. So what's wrong with this? Why does so why does it, why does this language not have a pumping length of two? What happens in all these decompositions? What's violated? Right. So this is bad because x to the j, sorry, x y j z is equal to one one to the j zero zero one, and this is not in the language because I can only have two ones at the beginning of the language. Right. So that would be an invalid decomposition for this thing. What about this? x, y to the j, z here is 1, 1 j times. That's also invalid, right? Mm -hmm. And same for here. So this is bad. Why is this not in the language? Because the language can only have two initial ones. There's The star only applies to that. So the 0 can just drop out and you have a whole bunch of ones. Yeah, but if you have it's any zeros... But there has to be... With this particular string. You chose this string. Ahead. Yeah. You can choose the string. This string is not in the language. So I can choose a particularly difficult string. And this string is, if I pump up j, this has to hold for all values of j. So it doesn't work. And this is bad also, right? Because it's 1 to the j, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is not in L either. So they're all not in L. All right. Good old pumping lemma. Huh? So you have to prove it for every possible p. So, so even if something, you know, like, even if the pumping lemma fails for two, it could work for three, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the, the the hard part to prove that the pumping lemma fails. You have to prove it for every conceivable choice of p. So it seems like an infinite amount of work. So that actually leads right into uh, the you know our next topic. To prove that it fails, you have to prove that it fails for every possible p. Okay. Uh, and let's let's do that by logic. Yeah. Let's negate yeah. this. What happens? So here, even if one like condition passed, the pumping lemma holds. Yeah. So if ev even if I could if I could find just one of these it's things, good that's it's that's good enough. You just have to find for well, you have to do this for every string I could give you. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's why there's there's many alternate many levels of alternation here. So you have to find one. So you have to find one p such that for any string someone could give you, you have you can find at least one example where this is true. Okay, so, so that's why it's a, there exists for all there exists. So there's two things. Yeah. So for every any string I could give you, you have to find at least one of these. So in this case, it fails be, because I I find one string where it doesn't work. I could find other strings where it does work, but that. That, that doesn't matter. So, so right. So let's do that. So, so the negation. What's the negation? So do you guys remember how to negate quantifiers? 
you reverse them. So whenever you push a not through a quantifier, it changes it from an exist to a for all. So, so not there exists equals for all not, and not for all equals there exists not. So when you push a, a not through a quantifier, it changes its type. So what's the negation? So for all, for all, I'll call it putative pumping length. <laughs> For all putative pumping lengths P, there is, so I just have to find now one example. So there is an S in the language with the length of S greater than or equal to P, such that what? So the for all so for all decompositions. So this is a good exercise in just logic, logical thinking. For all decompositions, s equals x, y, z with x, y less than or equal to p, y greater than zero. Um, the, yeah, I guess there's three qualifier on Yeah, yeah. So this is really a for all J here. I forgot about that. This is so there's m three quantifier alternations. So that there exists a J, a J such that x y to the J z is not in L. So that's why this is hard. Many three quantifier alternations are approaching the limits of comprehensibility. <laughs> For this generation, next generation will be able to do it. Yeah, they'll have better methods and high, yeah. higher like comprehension abilities. Okay, so that's a that's a mouthful. So do you want to apply that? Do you guys want to try and apply that to something or no? Uh huh. All right. So which one should I do? Hmm. Have you? Have we actually ever done this? I don't know. I haven't done this. Did Chai do one of these or no? Yeah. 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 So he. But you just need some review. Okay. Yeah. It is kind of a weird thing. So. an adversarial game where he asks the adversary for more information than is strictly available. The number of states and the length of the loop. All right. Well, the number of states is what gives you the pumping rate. And so I'm going to think of some examples. Did you do palindromes? Mm -hmm. Is not regular? Yeah. So you did palindromes. Did you do WW? Is not regular? No. No? WW is not regular, but that's in the book. It's oh. All right, so we're going to do. Um, I guess we'll do this. There's a couple of examples. So basically, there's examples where you need arbitrary amounts of information communicating to two parts of the string. There's other examples where the length of the strings grows greater than linearly. Right. So the length of so the strings in the language, let's say if you do strings of length n squared or n cubed, then this pumping lemma can only, you know, grow things linearly. So that won't work. So those are two types of, of problems you could do. So we could do one of those nonlinear ones. So this is number seven. So L equals X. Zero to the two to the N. I guess I called it X there. N greater than or equal to zero. So this is uh, I guess it starts with zero, 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 zero. If you're bored, come, you know you can come up with a context-free grammar for this. Uh, but what do you think? Is this regular? No. No. All right. So not regular. 
So who's going to walk me through the proof? So, so how do we do for all p? Zero to the two to the n? Yeah. It's always using, zero, right? Using the exp well, two to the n using the regular n. mathematical <laughs> exponent and zero to whatever that is. All right. Meaning so why don't we call it zero to the m? M equals two to the k. <laughs> k greater than or equal to zero. You like? Sure. All right. Um, all right, so how do we do these proofs? So, so pick any pumping length P, putative pumping length. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so, so I have to pick a string. So what string do you want to pick? So for these, okay, for these things that are like the gap is nonlinear. So we have zero, 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 zero. You know, gap gets big. So what's the idea? You want to pick one of these such that the next guy in the language is more than the pumping length away. And then that will, that will bring us, give us the violation. So, well, so what you have to do, so side calculation, is figure out what the gap is. So what's the, 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 what's the length of the gap? What's that? Uh, minus one, plus one. Let's see. So what's the length of the gap here? So it goes from, so there's a zero, which is two to the k long. And this one is two to the k plus one long, right? So how far apart are they? Two k plus one. What's the distance here? This is one of those problems you learned in elementary school, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Subtraction. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm being facetious here. Let's see. 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2 to the k. What's that? That's Because this is twice 2 to the k. So this is just 2 to the k, right? OK, so the gap is 2 to the k. So we just want to make sure that 2 to the k is greater than p, right? And then we'll be fine. The pumping length can't, won't be able to jump to the next thing. So I guess I could take log, I could make log base 2 to the p, but let's just take k equals p. <laughs> so, so what's s? s will just be a string of length 2 to the p. Okay. Then what? So that's, that's my, there exist. Now, so pick any decomposition so this is 2 to the p long you pick a decomposition x y z so this is any arbitrary decomposition with x y less than or equal to p and y non zero then what? So, so I just, what do I have to do now? So, do I have to do that for all J? No, I just have to show there exists a J. I just have to show there's one case when I, that I, Whatever decomposition I pick here, I just have to find one case when I ratchet it up, that something that's not in the language. All right. So, so here's zero to the two to the p. Zero to the two to the p plus one. 
So I, what can I consider? What string will not, will not be in a language now? What's the easiest example I could take? X, Y, Z. J equals 2. Yeah. J equals 2. X, Y, Y, Z. So someone, want, someone tell me why this is not a language. Who hasn't said anything? Actually, I'll, I'll grab my Coke and you guys think about it. <laughs> So there are ideas, right? Like, so sometimes there's there's things you learn that are conceptual ideas, and there's nuts and bolts. This is nuts and bolts, right? This is, I mean, this is the stuff you you send the technician in to do. But so this is probably one of the more technical things you have to do in this class. So you can think of it as interesting or or horrible. <laughs> I don't know. So why? So who's going to tell me? Why? Why? What's wrong with this string? So this is x, y squared z. Well, you need an extra 2p zeros to make it to the other side, and y is between 1 and p. You can never get 2p zeros. Right. So y is between is y is length 1 between length 1 and p, right? So where in this graph could it lie, or when this on the on this line? Well, actually, not even halfway. So, like, y must be, you know, sorry, x, y squared z is in here, right? It has to be somewhere in here, right? Because this is length p, right? And this thing is length 2 to the p. We chose it that way, all right? And so this is an L. In L, this is in L. All this stuff in between, all this stuff is not in L. Everything in between. So, so the length of y is greater than zero and less than or equal to p. So y can't. V and L. All right, so not no, completely not rigorous. Y, oh, sorry, x x y squared z can't be an L because it just can't make it. It needs to to get to the next you know outpost L outpost. It needs to go two to the p steps, but it can only go p steps. So this is the, the proof for all these things when you know instead of two to the k you have n factorial or you have n cubed or anything any nonlinear gap. You know if 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 the, the entries in your language spread out greater than linearly, there's no hope. You know, you'll never be able to get it you know, with a regular language because it can only turn out things in a linear fashion just by looping around. So they're all, all those proofs are the same. You can change it to n cubed, n to the fourth, n factorial, uh, anything you like. And all you have to do is compute the, dis the difference between any two subsequent members and just wait till it gets you know, big enough, bigger than your pumping length, and that's it. There's no way you can, uh, you know. The converse doesn't necessarily hold, though. You can have a number of zeros, each additional string in the language has less, has fewer additional zeros, like a logarithmic decay kind of thing that might be able to be done. You're saying, can you have a regular language with a logarithmic decay? No. Down. Well, so the you know you have so they pump down. yeah. So you can pump. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what the question is. Is it can you have regular languages with prop with weird properties, or can you have non-regular languages that don't behave like this? 
What's your question? Well, I'm, I'm thinking that, well, the, the string I'm thinking of, say it's considered 0 to the 2 to the k, it's 0 to the uh, log of k or something. Where well, the gap is getting smaller. Yes. Um, That will be, well, that will actually be regular. That's, yeah, that's we can talk about, because, because we eventually get to a point where it's just going to be one. Yeah, but that, yeah, that's kind of, we can talk about that after class. That's kind of, that's an interesting problem, but I don't think it's really well formed, <laughs> you know, the way, the way it's phrased. Like, think we're in discrete land, so things can't get arbitrarily close. Mm -hmm. So, never you mind. <laughs> that's not a, that's not important. So if you have regular spacing, you can just get back to that state until it's already there. Probably, yeah. You probably. I mean, if it's a regular language, you want to give a machine for it. That's how you prove it. You know. But you could have things with regular spacing. You could take, like, say, the even numbers, and then take out random. You know, like the even numbers. Even numbers are regular language, even lengths. But then, let's say I had like uh, a gnome that came by, and randomly removed elements from a regular language infinitely many times. Uh, maybe. Yeah, you could still have even spacing with occasional like random things being taken out infinitely often. That wouldn't be regular. So there's all sorts of weird things you can do. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Gnomes come by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, rich tradition of mathematics right there. The, the myth of the gnomes. Yeah. All right. Come up with things like What? Make that your dissertation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the other type of example, there's the length examples. What were the other ones? The ones where... Chomsky? No, Chomsky. No, sorry. There's humor going on here. Please, desperately try to Yeah. Uh, wait, I forgot what the first type of, the other type of irregular language was. Does anyone remember? There was, there were lengths. There were, you know, the gap gets really big. What were the other types? Uh, where you, you were thinking oh, yeah, when you have to, like, you know, palindromes or one to the n, where you have infinite information, you know, arbitrary large amounts of information being stored. Okay. And those are, well, those are a little different, the proof style. But I don't know. I think this is enough for now, unless you guys object. Yeah, we can talk about it. We can have more later. Because I think... There's only so much pumping lemma you can do. <laughs> you know, before you. That's the whole point. You're doing this as you want. Yeah. All right. Um, if you want to, if you're, if you want to see how that works, try and prove something like yourself. Right now, if you want to try and prove that the palindromes aren't regular, using the pumping lemma, and I'll come around and, and check. Um, all right. So, back to grammars. All right, so I guess we'll have a warm-up first just to get you guys back in gear. Do number two from today's handout. This is generating a grammar. Good practice. See if you remember your retention rate. Well, you know, do context-free. Do context-free if you can. Or le even, le even, you know, like a regular grammar if you can. Whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, do context-free. It's easier. What's the answer? For zero star, one, zero, one star. Actually, wait. We'll save yours. I'll, I'll give you my, my lame one first, which is not a regular, well, it doesn't look like a regular grammar. So I, I said, oh, I'll go to A, 1, B, and then A goes to, what A go to? 0, A, or epsilon. B goes to 0, B, or 1, A, or 1, B, ah, or epsilon, right? So that's everything star, and that's 0 star. But, but I like Tom's better. Tom has a better answer, I think. Because it's because it's a uh, regular grammar. So go ahead. What did you say? So s points to zero s. Zero s. Or one a. 
or 1A. And then A points to 0A, 0B, and or 1A. Or epsilon. Or epsilon. Pretty snazzy, huh? I like that. Does the same thing. And that one on the right is regular, and the one on the left is complex? Well, I mean, this is, they're both regular grammars, I guess. This is not in the. It's context free versus right. Okay. Yeah. They, 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 yeah, they're both. It's just labeling. I mean, they both generate a regular, they both generate the same regular expression. It's just that this is, it doesn't look, it's not apparently clear here that this generates. Yeah, it's zero you don't need the zero. Yeah, zero. You don't need the zero. Right, so you get an arbitrary number of zeros, and then you get a one. So this is kind of cool, because this is how you control, you have a loop, and this is the control letter that gets you out of the loop. So you can even do stuff like, let's say you want to do a loop for a while, then do some stuff, and then start another loop. You can do that with this stuff. You know, you can do this loop, have this A as the exit from the loop. When you exit the loop, you can make a pattern, and then you can get into another loop. So it's kind of getting like to be like programming. <laughs> you can do the same thing on the left. The epsilon could be 1, and then S could just be A, B. You're saying the epsilon here could be 1? Right. Yeah. So here's... Yeah, so many ways to do it. S goes to A, B. That's a clever thing, too. Your epsilon, your, your exit condition doesn't have to be epsilon. It could be 1. So here's another answer. So many answers. Oh, you are so right. My apologies. Yeah, so we only want one one when we exit out of this, the, the zero loop, the zero start loop. Then we get a, you know, dumping out a one is our exit condition. Wait a sec. No, that doesn't work. Let's see. Oh, I guess it does. Yeah. There's no requirement of zero. So this says, okay, I have, instead of doing it, Oh, yeah, I have two sub-problems. This sub-problem is zero star and ends with a one, and this sub-problem is just arbitrary stuff. Is that one a, like either right linear or left linear grammar, the one on the, the S goes to zero, S, one, eight? Yeah. Yeah. That's left linear grammar. Or right linear grammar. Depending on how you define it. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Hi. Well, left linear and right linear, it's kind of an arbitrary distinction of what you call left So what does Shai use? Whatever Shai uses. You said it's kind of arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> he said some books say one way and some books say the other way. So I think he called the, that The point being that it's a linear, linear. Depends question. what you're looking at, right? Yeah. Depends what side of, you know, yeah, it's a half empty or half full. The point yeah, what's on the left? It's the, the non-terminal or, the, or the, uh, the terminal. All right. Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. He's right. All right, so let's do some more interesting grammars from last time. I think we stopped. Where did we stop? Does everyone have the thing from last time? We, we did Indeed. six. And we talked about seven. Oh. We didn't do eight. All right, there's some interesting eight. ones. Eight, we're going to have to skip over for now. Let's see. I'll, uh, I think I can dig up the, uh, this sucker. I think Num I've got the solution for eight if you want you got a solution for eight. eight? Well, we'll talk about that after. Just wow, there's a property of Arsenal Jerry Corporation on this thing. <laughs> Those guys are thorough. Have you checked your back recently? Yeah. <laughs> I saw one tattooed on Shai's. Uh, yeah. He's had an expiration date, though. <laughs> All right, so, so where did we get to the. We did seven. We talked about seven. Equal number of zeros and ones, or we know we did how to do ors, right? Ors are really easy, oring two grammars, right? Um, all right, we'll skip. We'll start with nine. Let's just start with nine. More practice, and I'll I'll dig it up here for those who don't have it. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you. It's hard to type and stand up at the same time. Yeah. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Is that how it comes out of the box? Yeah, I got the I got the the, the surly version. <laughs> AOL server surly. <laughs> Was this it? Yeah. All right, so. Can you guys see that? Uh, yeah. All right. You know what? I'll. You can pump it up in. in uh, I just like Opera. The oh, fastest oh, browser. Fast. <coughs> With a million home pages. That is the fastest browser. How's that? There we go. <laughs> it's out of control. Ah, uh, all right. Wow. Well, look at the time. It's already, uh, time is flying. Okay. Um, so why don't we just go plow through some of these together? Some of these are tough. So... All right, so what about the grammar for 0 to the m, 1 to the n, n greater than or equal to m, greater than or equal to 0? So there's at least as many 1s as zeros. How would I do that? So this isn't really, doesn't really fall under the title complements, like it says there. But, uh, but it, it is building up to it. OK, so how do you do this one? So this is 9. OK, Dimitri, this is great. Just for Joe. Uh, well, you either add, you either add just a 1, or you add a 0 and a 1. So you're saying? So we could go s goes to s1, or 0s1, or epsilon. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, that wasn't so hard. A little warm up. But wait, what about the rest of the class? Are you happy with that? Or no. So I'm adding equal num. I mean, at least as if this were m equals n, then it would just be that, right? 0s1. Do you also have 1s0? One 1s0? One no, because all the 1s oh, are okay. after the zeros. Okay. So if it was just 0 to the m, remember 0 to the m, 1 to the n, was just s goes to 0s1 epsilon. So if we do that, we get this. Oh, by the way, so what if, what if we had, this is not on there, but I guess it's symmetrical. What if? m was greater than or equal to n, greater than or equal to 0. So s0, 0, 0 s1, epsilon? 0s. Zero 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 right, because the zeros have to be come before the ones. All right. And the other one was, all right, slight variations on this. Maybe I'm beating this dead. But what if n is strictly greater than m? So yeah, so you have to start with at least one one, or you could end with at least one one. Either way will work, right? So yeah, the easiest thing is just to do something like this: zero s one, and just make your base case one, and then you're guaranteed to have at least one one, right? So you have at because that's what this says. This says that n there's at least one one in the picture, or well, it, it forces that. It forces at least one one. But it doesn't have an epsilon determinator. Right, it has a one determinator. A terminal can be any any character. It doesn't have to be an epsilon. And this 
this forces there to be at least one more one. All right? So, all right, we're almost, almost done, I swear. So what's the next one? I want to generate the complement of zero star, one star. So what about zero star, one star? How would I give some a grammar that generates that complement? Okay. I propose a way that has involves no brain power at all. How could you do this without like with limited brain power? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be there on the test, you know, when you're taking the test, Kevin. So you have to figure out another low brain power way. Let's see. Um, other low brain power or less brain power way is to make a finite state machine for it. I don't know. It takes a while. It's really? Well, not that way. All right, let's see. I, I think that's easy for me. If I can do it, come on. So what's zero star, one star? It's just zero. We just did that, actually. I had a reason for putting this up before. Well, Just think of in terms of the tools you already have. So here's zero star, one star. So what's its complement? Right, so here's zero star, one star complement. So this is zero star, one star complement. So what's the grammar? Someone give me a grammar. A goes to uh, zero A. Right, so this is A, B, C. Right, so A will go on a zero, it goes back to A. Or it could go to B on a one. B goes to one B or zero C. And what does C go to? One C or epsilon. Right, so there you go. That's not so bad. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's better to you could be creative and think about it too. How about this? Uh, S goes to A one zero A. C. S goes to A one zero A. One zero A. And then A goes to well, actually, we go to, if you make it C. S goes to C one zero C. It's the same thing. It's the same C. But this doesn't accept the empty. Well, empty it isn't accepted. Oh, zero star, one star. I'm sorry. C, one, zero, C would be what it would. C, one, zero, C. I don't know. But see there, you have to scratch your head for a while and prove to yourself that that, that works. Proving grammar's work is, I mean, I don't know. It seems tough. It seems tough to me. Maybe that works. I don't know, but I have to think about it. It's probably right. <laughs> but I'd really... Any string that has a 1 followed by a 0. Right? I guess. Yeah, I guess that sounds right. And then C is anything? Yeah. All right, that's probably better. Okay, but I'm still, I don't know why, I'm still not convinced that, that that's it. I guess this is an easy example, but the point I was trying to make is sometimes it's easier to convince yourself that a finite state machine does something. <laughs> then but when you get to 12, you can't do that because 12, you can't make a finite state machine. For 12. It's not a regular. Right? Yeah, but, aha, uh -huh. uh, 12 is the buildup. So, so, so here's one way you can do this. So what is 0 to the n 
1 to the n complement. What is that equal to? So this is 12. So I claim you can break it down in terms of the, the examples we just did. So complements are sometimes really hard to do. They're not trivial, like in for grammars, like they are for DFAs. For DFAs, you just toggle things. For, for languages, you have to do work mm -hmm. to get complements. They're generally not easy. So maybe I'll leave you with that. Why don't you think about it for a few seconds? And then um, also think about 13, the challenging problem. It's not as challenging as I thought. <laughs> Can you generate a grammar for something that's not a palindrome? So think about that one later in the privacy of your own home. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, but, okay, yeah, so closing, closing words. Can anyone tell me a way to do 12 using the other things? Right. So if you break it up even more, so this is n greater than m greater than or equal to 0 union. So when can something not be of this form? Either it's not in 0 star or 1 star. So it's not in 0 star or 1 star. If it is in 0 star or 1 star, how could it fail to be of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n? It could either have more ones than zeros or more zeros than ones. So, so if we call, so it'll be something of the form S goes to S1 or S2 or S3, right? Where S1 generates this grammar, S2 generates that grammar, and S3 generates that one. Yeah. So if we can if we can or things together, if we can take something and or them together, then we can do something. So um, let me just write it down real quick. So it's S one goes to S one one or zero S one one or one. S two goes to S zero S two or zero S two one or zero and S three goes to whatever one of those things. All right. Which one does it go to over All right, so let's say well let's call both of these S three. I guess this works. Oh, I'm still still confused about that one. Uh, all right. So, anyways, that's enough. That's enough for today.